Mr. Romani, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, you've been doing a bit of traveling recently. You were in the U.S. Uh, you're here in Beijing now. Uh, I'm sure clients, partners, regulators have lots of questions for you about uh, how the integration of Credit Suisse is going. What sorts of questions are you getting and how are you responding? Well, first of all, I think that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's normal that we have to respond to those questions. Uh, what happened was uh, over the weekend uh, back in March was uh, quite extraordinary. And, uh, but I'm happy to be able to report that things are progressing very well. Uh, we made a uh, shift, uh, very swift um, uh, uh, pr uh, progress in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in integrating uh, Credit Suisse. Uh, we closed the transaction in record times, also thanks to the big cooperation of, uh, of regulators across the, the globe. And that's one of the reasons why I'm also here uh, today in Beijing, because I, you know, this is my first trip uh, uh, to Asia since uh, taking on, uh, um, again, my role at, uh, at UBS. And I think it's very important for me to reach out to um, uh, all the Chinese uh, stakeholders and uh, reiterate our commitment to China while also updating them on, on, uh, on the integration. So uh, I do know that here in China, UBS has a securities venture. Uh, Credit Suisse also had a securities venture. It, it would seem to make sense to sell out of the Credit Suisse venture. Is that something you're pursuing now? Well, we are currently evaluating uh, the best options. Of course, uh, we are not uh, allowed to have uh, two, two, two operations, but we need to really understand exactly how to do that. Uh, we are very happy with our historical um, uh, uh, operation here in China. That uh, we were the first uh, to get the license as a foreign uh, investors to own a, um, uh, a control stake. So, so uh, it's a very important element of our strategy in uh, in, in China. And now we need to uh, exactly evaluate how to integrate or how to what to do with the CS um, operation. Uh, sort of how far have you progressed in that process? Are, are you looking at potential buyers? Are you talking to anyone yet, or has it not gotten to that place? At, at this stage, we are examining the situation. Okay. Uh, in your second quarter results, uh, it mentioned specifically that uh, client confidence, sentiment, and activity here in Asia was, was muted. Uh, are you still finding that's the case into the third quarter? Well, I think that we, we saw in general a little pickup in, uh, acl across the globe, also in Asia, in terms of uh, client activity. Uh, so uh, uh, the most important topic for us was to see uh, uh, the returns of assets uh, that, that, that left Credit Suisse uh, uh, in, in, in Q4, Q1 uh, this year. Uh, we started to see um, assets coming back at Credit Suisse uh, in, in the, towards the end of the second quarter. We see, we see also very good momentum in, uh, in Q3. So that's the most important issue. But also in general, uh, it's fair to say that uh, investors are more constructive than they have been uh, uh, in, uh, recently. So on the uh, momentum you talked about in Q3, uh, there was a net new money inflow of about 16 billion US dollars in 2Q. You said at the time you expected that to continue. What is it looking like in 3Q? What is Good momentum mean? Well, I mean, we, we are pursuing uh, similar um, patterns, uh, so we are not going to be specific on, on numbers. So the quarter is still ongoing, but the most important issue is that we see we see, see uh, substantial uh, substantially our our forecast being confirmed, uh, and we are getting to the close of the, of, of the quarter. So I think that uh, that's very encouraging to see that uh, so quickly. Um, our our clients are res are responding to uh, our actions to stabilize uh, uh, Credit Suisse and, and 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 to and to offer them the best of the combined uh, organizations. And the 200 billion U.S. dollars you were talking about that that uh, was was withdrawn from Credit Suisse in the final days before the takeover. Uh, how much progress have you made in getting that back as well? Yeah, we have to say part of it was already uh, landing at uh, UBS, uh, but, but uh, uh, as we said in the second quarter, uh, already we saw some of that coming back. Uh, we see it uh, now in, in the in the third quarter. It's going to take uh, it's going to take uh, 
few quarters to regain uh, uh, a big chunk. You know, getting back everything is going to be almost impossible. But our aim is to recapture as much as possible. And in Asia, I believe in the second quarter, was a, uh, there was a net money inflow of about 1.8 or so billion U.S. dollars in Asia. Do you, do you see uh, a similar sort of trajectory in the third quarter as well? Yeah, we see positive trends across the globe uh, in, each, uh, in each region. Yeah. What about here in China? Uh, what does the sentiment feel like, uh, not only here, but like globally, the perception of China and Chinese assets? Well, look, uh, in, in general, in the globe, you know, we are going through very challenging uh, times in terms of macroeconomic, uh, uh, in terms of the macroeconomic picture. Uh, of course, uh, the geopolitical tensions are not helping uh, at this stage, uh, you know, but I, I do believe that uh, many investors still see uh, the long-term potential of China. Uh, it's exactly how to navigate uh, uh, the current situation that makes uh, our job even more important. Uh, we are not only here in China but also abroad are helping clients to understand China, how to invest uh, into China and also for Chinese investors how to invest uh, abroad. So I think that uh, we see this uh, situation as a evolution of almost natural evolution of uh, you know, things that happen over the last 10, 15 years, the macroeconomic, the geopolitical picture has changed completely and uh, you know, this is part of the journey. Uh, when your employees here in China, when regulators here in China or clients, partners ask, you know, do you have plans for more investment? Uh, what are your plans for China as part of the new UBS? How do you respond? Well, the, uh, we respond that we have been here in China for 30 years. We were one of the first to be in China and, and to make a substantial investments and uh, uh, is exactly uh, the visit for uh, the reason for my visit is, is here to be uh, to reiterate our commitment that uh, you know we, we see China as an important driver for growth uh, for us uh, right now we are very busy in uh, integrating uh, Credit Suisse we are very busy in managing uh, our current business staying close to clients but we are not losing sight of uh, the opportunities that uh, are still there to grow organically, both in the U.S. but also in Asia and particularly here in China. The, um, recently, there was a Bank of America survey of global investors that identified Chinese property as the thing that people thought most likely could cause the next global credit event. Where does it rank for you in terms of risks? Well, we know that uh, almost uh, any major crisis if there is one is triggered by either a real estate uh, uh, crisis or a government uh, debt crisis. So I think it's quite clear that the situation in China is fragile around uh, the real estate sectors. The government is taking actions to contain and to help uh, manage uh, this uh, very uh, uh, difficult situations. Uh, but so of course, if there is one part of the economy that is exposed to potential threat is, is the real estate sector. Is, is UBS taking any actions to try and uh, mitigate potential risk? No, we, we have very limited uh, uh, direct exposure. So we are here uh, in, in China main, uh, mainly uh, helping uh, uh, clients manage their, their wealth, uh, doing advisory. Uh, through through the investment banking part and, and wealth management, so uh, we are not uh, directly involved in, in lending in, 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 in the Chinese property markets. So uh, the back to the integration of Credit Suisse, uh, you, it's taken your headcount, your staffing, to about 120,000 globally, uh, and you've you've talked about pretty forthcoming about the need to reduce that number. How much of a reduction do you think is needed uh, at the end of the day? I, I never really spoke about the need of reducing uh, at count because it's not my and it's not our philosophy. What we need to do is to restructure the bank. Credit Suisse uh, needed to be restructured, uh, profoundly restructured because uh, uh, out of, uh, of this situation. And then uh, we need to extract the synergies uh, that uh, are necessary to make both businesses viable and stronger. Uh, so we, we are taking actions as we speak to uh, uh, to, to resize uh, the business. Uh, uh, we are also 
taking advantage of the fact that uh, we had a natural attrition that is helping uh, uh, across the globe. We have demographic trends helping, uh, uh, in that sense, uh, 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 people uh, ex uh, exiting the bank through um, um, uh, retirements or early retirements. We are working also in facilitating uh, uh, movements of people within the bank. Um, also between the two banks as we speak so I think that I, I, I'm comfortable that we can mitigate the uh, the painful part of, of the job which is the social cost but it's very necessary to in order to create a business that is sustainable sure. and that resizing of the business how do you think that'll look uh, across different geographies be it America Europe uh, Switzerland and here in China I or think in Asia. It's, I think I don't see any any particular country being more or less affected than others. I think it's uh, generally speaking, there is a need uh, to uh, to take actions across the board. Uh, what about across the divisions at UBS itself? Do you see any difference? No, I I, th I think uh, the, the business uh, the areas where we 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 we're going to see the most. Uh, impactful uh, uh, impacts of, of the restructuring is definitely going to be the investment bank because uh, of course we uh, the, the investment bank and everything which has to do with non core assets will be the one piece that co will contribute half of the cost uh, synergies we want to achieve therefore is a is a meaningful part uh, but uh, in general uh, every other uh, segment will uh, contribute uh, real estate footprint is, is, is an example corporate center functions uh, uh, IT infrastructure across the board um, uh, also in our Swiss operation uh, and in wealth management so it's it's very difficult to see areas that are not subject to um, you right. know rationalization the um, the investment bank uh, at Credit Suisse, it seems like that the plan is to reduce by as much as about two thirds of that business. Uh, what what is the plan for the business, uh, the part of that business that you uh, keep? Uh, how do you want to integrate it with the overall UBS investment banking operation? The vast majority of, of the operations we are keeping are the ones that uh, are extremely complementary to our franchises in the investment banking part uh, in the U.S. Uh, and also here in Asia, uh, particularly in Southeast Asia and, and, in, and in, in Europe and Switzerland. So basically M&A, uh, capital markets activities, uh, relationship with, with corporates, financial sponsors. We focus mainly on uh, TMT, on healthcare, consumer, financial sponsors, and uh, and, and that's the area where we uh, we're gonna keep the most um, capabilities uh, at uh, from Credit Suisse, which will enable both firms to be more competitive. That geographic split sort of a Southeast Asia, U.S., Brazil. Is that also reflective of where you see the most growth coming in the near term? We see growth uh, coming from organically from two pieces. One is the Asia, yes, uh, here across the board, um, China included, and also the U.S. So that's, uh, that's where we are also, as I mentioned before, we are focusing on, on integration, but we can't forget that, you know, we still have ambitions to, to, go, to grow beyond. And actually, now having 5.5 uh, trillion of clients' assets, uh, having a stronger uh, asset management uh, capabilities, both from a regional standpoint of view, I think uh, at this uh, very successful joint venture we have here in, uh, in China with, uh, with uh, I ICBC, um, think about uh, the alternative space that we are occupying in a, in a more meaningful way uh, also in the US. Uh, we, have, we have opportunities that, that uh, will enable us to have even an even stronger uh, platform to start to grow organically uh, going forward. So does that mean when you say resize the business, that means while some parts of the business might uh, see a reduction in headcount, other parts might actually see an increase? Of course. I mean, look, you know, the issue is that what we need to do is to, we need to rationalize and resize uh, the cost base, uh, make it fit, make it resilient. And, and then prepare for growth. Uh, I, I'm pretty convinced that uh, uh, and that's the reason why I think that, that the platform will be 
uh, unique uh, for any talents that wants to work in, 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 in this industry to grow and to have a great career. So I think that as we do that and we stay close to clients uh, try to give them the best of the combined platform, we're going to we, 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 we're gonna hire people. We're gonna have to, you know, um, uh, attract the best talents and retain the best talents. Is there one part of the business, either geographically or otherwise, that that growth will be most pronounced? You think an increase in headcount? I don't. I don't really see that. I mean, from a from a. Uh, I, I, again, probably Asia and, and the U.S. are the areas where we are likely to go, grow more. Uh, rel relative to the, relative to the others, right. Uh, the other thing you mentioned the non-core businesses, and by the end of June, I think there was about 55 billion of uh, risk-weighted assets that have been put into uh, non-core arm, uh, sort of a, a wind-down arm. Do you see that growing much more, more uh, being put into that unit? Or is it about right now? No, I, as we mentioned at, uh, uh, during the Q2 uh, results presentation, uh, the perimeter around non-core assets is broadly finalized. Uh, we are doing it as we speak, uh, literally. Uh, as we close the, the third quarter, we're going to then uh, de facto uh, confirm that this is more or less uh, what we, we say it is going to be. So I, we do have a, a little bit of uh, changes, but they are not really relevant and meaningful. Um, and uh, what we will now report in the second quarter is also the allocation of uh, op risk, uh, operational risks, uh, risk weighted assets of the entire uh, non-core legacy. Uh, and then uh, we will uh, continue to execute on the wind down of this uh, part of uh, the balance sheet why most importantly addressing uh, the cost base that is there to sustain those assets because this is probably the most uh, meaningful uh, opportunity and, and, and priority that we have is to take down the cost associated with uh, the non-core and the uh, legacy IB infrastructure of uh, Credit Suisse. So ultimately it, it could be slightly more than 55 billion but not, not much. No, no. not relevant. Yeah. And, and it, I, I think you've said before that you expect the wind down to conclude in 2026. Is that still the case? No, what we said is that we expect uh, half of the position, half of, uh, of these uh, positions to naturally decay by the end of 2026. So without us taking any action. So obviously we're not going to sit on those positions uh, waiting for natural decay. We're going to take actions to reduce it. But our aim is to do it, uh, to do that at economical uh, uh, creative uh, uh, levels for our shareholders. So we are not a forced sellers. I mean, at the end of the day, even today is, uh, is less than 10% of our uh, risk weighted assets. So it's not a meaningful amount of, uh, of, um, of exposure. And by 2026, it's going to be less than 5%. So you, know, you can count that we're going to do it uh, while preserving value for our shareholders. So uh, we were just talking about all the travel you're doing recently, uh, US, uh, London, here in Beijing now. Why did you feel the need to get on a plane this month and do all this traveling? Well, I, I think that uh, Asia, and particularly in China, is, 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 a, is a very important operation for us, not only for now, but also um, um, for the future. So I think that uh, reaching out to our most important stakeholders to give them an update on where we stand on the integration, our plans for the future at, uh, at UBS, uh, I think, uh, was very, very important. Does, does the travel uh, get in the way of all the integration and all the other work you have to do at home? E, e, not because in the first 100 days I stayed in Zurich, focused on preparing, uh, you know, the closing of the transactions, also the, the, the other steps that we announced during the summer, uh, giving back the guarantees to the government, uh, uh, returning all the liquidity facilities, uh, preparing for the second quarter presentations, and now that this is done, it's time for me to go out and reach out to our most important uh, stakeholders.